David Kep uh, called me and said he'd been thinking about what he wanted to do next in terms of a, a project he could write in order to direct. He'd been writing quite a few big projects up until that point. And uh, he found this book, uh, A Stir of Echoes. Richard Matheson is, he's always, he was always one of my favorite uh, writers. He'd done, um, and aside from, he's got a number of books that are legendary, you know, well, I Am Legend, uh, What Dreams May Come. Uh, these are, these are, you know, these are great books that I always loved. But he also has written some of the best um, Twilight Zones, and Star Treks. He wrote Duel, the, the script for uh, Spielberg about Dennis Weaver and the truck. That's sort of one of the best TV movies ever made. Um, so I always admired him greatly, and I was uh, hunting around in a bookstore, and I just I saw this book. You know, you know it's like a used bookstore of science fiction and fantasy type stuff. And I saw um, this one of his that I'd never read, so I picked it up and. And I just loved it. I mean, I just uh, I thought I saw the world really clearly and that it would make a great movie. I read the book and thought it was extremely cinematic and uh, something that also could warrant being updated, which was an interesting aspect to it since the book was written in the 50s. Uh, and then um, uh, to check, asked me to check out the rights and pursue the rights to the book. I, I tend to really like whatever I'm... Uh, whatever I'm not doing, I like better. So if I, you know, if I'm working on an original, I really wish I was doing an adaptation, and vice versa. The um, the thing about uh, originals are great because it's your idea, and it tends to reflect your personality a little more because it comes right out of you. But you have that daily struggle of the blank page. You're really starting from zero, you know. And um, but with an adaptation, you uh, there's a there's an enormous amount of material to choose from, so it's more winnowing and adapting, and you know making smoothing transitions um, so you have there's no there's no shortage of stuff you know especially and if you love the book it helps because then you tend to have stuff you really like but um, the problem uh, the problem with that is it, it it's not as much you it's it's really you know you're 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 reflecting someone else's vision or refracting someone else's vision I got the script and I remember it vividly because it's rare that my agent or my manager will say, this is a good one. But every once in a while it happens. And um, so I got the script and I started reading it at 1.30 in the morning when my husband was asleep. And uh, I couldn't put it down. I was up till three and I was scared to death. Well, you know, it just had this kind of underlying uh, creepiness that uh, just kind of really affected me and, and, and stayed with me. And uh, I liked the character an awful lot because I thought that the things that were happening to him, uh, the sort of uh, supernatural things that were happening to him, uh, the ghost element of the story, was not the only f thing that's going on for the guy, you know? And to me, that's, uh, you know, that's an interesting, it's an interesting dynamic. Uh, that you, he also has things that are happening personally that are kind of reflecting what else is going on in the screenplay. So, I, you know, I, I responded to it. I thought it was creepy. It's, it's an amazing script. Um, and there's sort of been like this whole slew of like horror, thriller-esque movies out that have, you know, sort of fallen slightly short of, of being like really scary. And this, this movie definitely is that and it has all these other elements involved and, you know, sort of follows real people. So. I really dug the script a lot, so I'm thrilled that I've been able to be a part of it. I guess this followed the same process of adaptation that I use on any adaptation I do, which is I uh, first read, you know, read the book two or three times. Uh, then I go through the book and write scene, uh, you know, break out the scenes. So I make a little card for what I think is a scene in the book. It tends to be long and chaotic because books aren't like movies. They don't go neatly from two and a half page scene to two and a half page scene. Um, so then you look at this enormous structure you've got laid out on your desk, and you go have a cocktail because there's there's you think this will never this will never cut. So uh, and after that you just start you know I read I read the book yet again, and I look at if I've highlighted the same things over and over again. You know have I picked have I always come back to what I think are the key scenes or key moments or you know really expressive bits of dialogue, and then I start winnowing. I take out the stuff that I'm not that I don't think is going to find a home in the movie, and you know start to build around those key scenes. Now there will be gigantic holes because books aren't sewn together like movies, you know. Um, and then, and then the, the, the writing process is really just how well do you blend plot elements together and how well do you cover, cover over those transitions. And it's not till 
in an adaptation, it's not really till the third or fourth draft that it starts to become a movie instead of a shortened version of a book. Well, I was fired as being a ma an agent, so, you know, I had to find something else to do. That's what people do when they're fired, I guess. And uh, I don't know, I always thought that somewhere down the road that I might want to be a manager and producer. There's a lot, you have a lot more latitude. You can still represent people as you can when you're an agent, but then you also get the opportunity to produce, which you can't do when you're an agent. So it's been a lot of fun in that way, because you're obviously much more connected to the projects. Um, I worked with David on a film called The Trigger Effect, which was his first film that he did. And it was in a little bit of a different capacity. There was another producer on, and so this one was a little bit different. And he called me six months ago, seven months ago, and said, I have a script, and we're trying to get it going. You want to read it? So he proceeded to send me several drafts, and I loved the script right away. I think that he's, he's gained so much experience, aside from directing, in terms of just being around, that, you know, the directors that he's worked with. Um, I mean, he's done two movies with Steven Spielberg, a movie with Bob Zemeckis, couple of movies with Brian De Palma, um, you know, and others, and Ron, you know, he did a movie with Ron Howard. I, I think that when you've been around that kind of a process and been able to up close witness uh, really great directors working in that way, I mean, there's almost no better experience than actually making the movies uh, that you could possibly get. Gavin, uh, I've, known, I've known for, gosh, a long time, like 12 years. He was my agent. Now he's a manager and he's producing this and I think he's doing a great job. I think he's going to have an even bigger career as a producer than he did as an agent. He's he's really good. He is however, you know, it's, it's no secret, uh, he, he is in fact the devil. So, you know, that's kind of a problem. But, you know, we've managed to, to, to work around that and, uh, you know, he keeps his minions at bay so, so it's probably okay. <laughs> David said he kind of saw what happens with Tom as a midlife crisis. And the other woman is a ghost, just happens to be a ghost instead of, you know, his secretary or something like that. It's, it's a ghost story in, 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 the, in the classic sense of, of the word. You know, ghost stories are, are this, there's a long literary tradition in these things. And there's a couple key elements that they seem to have from time to time. And that is someone whose own life is sort of unsettled, into which comes this otherworldly element whose, whose afterlife is unsettled and the two somehow need to reconcile one way or another. It's about a family that isn't very involved with spiritual things. He, he doesn't believe, I mean the best kind of ghost stories are obviously when, when there are ghosts all around you and one of the characters doesn't believe in any of that sort of stuff. He described it as a horror movie and I went, oh man, I don't know. should I really be in a horror movie? And he said, well, you know, a horror movie is a lot different than a slasher movie. And in the course of film history, there's been a lot of great, you know, horror movies made, you know. Can't get him more than six feet from the couch. Why? That's where she appeared to him. Well, casting is exactly like dating. You know, you got to go out and you meet some people, you know, you meet a lot of people. And sometimes you meet somebody and you fall in love right away and it lasts, but that doesn't happen very often. Um, other times you meet somebody and you fall in love right away, uh, but it only lasts for like one date and then you grow to hate them. And then that doesn't work out either, you know. And other times you dislike someone at first for some reason or another, you know, what you had for lunch probably. Um, and then suddenly they grow on you and they become the best person in the movie, you know. So, so who knows? Kevin Bacon was certainly a first choice for us. What's incredible about him is not just that he's a, you know, an inspired actor, and, and we expected that, but uh, and he's just a pleasure to be around, but also he's able to uh, handle the technical side of film acting, which is so frustrating and so irritating and, and such, an, su such an overlooked skill. The only thing I'm not sure about is the moment yeah. at which I notice that she's there. Do you want to be on her, or do you want to see me or you want the move to be motivated by me 
book in this way. It was great to, to get to do something where I was going to be doing a lot of scenes with him. Um, he's so much fun to work with, and I learn a lot, you know, from watching him. Kevin is, like, uh, an impeccable professional, um, and he's always, you know, he'll totally always do off-camera for you, and he really... Uh, it's amazing to watch him because he really uh, is always very focused and uh, the stories that he tells too, you know, off camera about his life and other experiences that he's had is, have been really great to be able to even hear those stories. Because you watch all these films, you know, and you get to hear like the behind the scenes look at what actually went on, which is great. Ileana is great too. It's, uh, you know, she's got such a wit. I mean, I've, I've been, uh, you know, it's been fun to watch her ad lib and stuff. And, uh, um, they're just a great group. I think uh, Catherine Irby is, uh, is, is, is an untapped treasure. I think she's doing a great job, and Liza Weil is, uh, is really going places. It's, uh, it's a good group. That's right. This is Wally. Hi, Jack. Yeah. The cameraman. I am. Yeah. Oh, is that the other? He was the cameraman. Well, he's the guy that helps us for publicity. Oh, he helps. Yeah, he's he helps us. He's the extra cameraman. Right. Exactly. But he's the real cameraman. Well, he's the movie cameraman. And this is the publicity cameraman. Zach is unusual for a child actor because he hasn't really acted much, which I think shows in a really good way. My name is Zachary. And oh, well, I'm doing a lot on this. Got a pretty big part in this. And we looked at like 30 kids in Chicago, and they all, you know, just could not, you know, were hyperactive, falling off the chair, couldn't say a line, you know, to save their life. And uh, Mary Cahoon found Zachary in New York. It's a challenge. Is it a challenge for you to become another person? <laughs> That's the hardest part. It's really tough. I mean, when you're five or six years old, I mean, just being able to have the attention span to focus on these kinds of things is difficult. But he has a natural gift for it. And the other great thing about it is he really looks like he, he could be Kevin's son. Um, so that's terrific in, in that way. But this, this little boy is extremely sharp and extremely energetic and a great sport about about just the whole process of movie making. I mean, when I was five years old, there's no way I would be able to sit and do something over and over and over again that way. I mean, I'd start crying and want to leave. I did, uh, my last two films were with children and animals, and it was really um, difficult at times. It's definitely, you you know, you don't do five takes. You don't, they don't nail it on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Yesterday we did, you know, 19 takes, but it's, what we will have on screen is amazing. It's my first movie, and it's, Pretty easy. If you ask the guy that's, you know, has a has a one one line part as a, you know, the man in the deli, you know, I'll say, well, it's about this guy who works in a deli. Well, it's mostly about um, this little boy named Jake, which I play. You know, I sat down with him before we were going to start, and I said, you know, listen, I want you to know that I'm going to be doing some weird stuff, and I'm going to be acting kind of weird, and. You know, it's talking loud sometimes, and I and I don't want you to, I don't want you to worry about it. You know, because um, it's just going to be pretending, and it's just going to be pretending. He was like, oh, okay, okay, and the, you know, the first time we sort of did something where I was kind of intense, you know, and I was like, I don't know, shaking him or something, you know, going after him, and he looked at me and said, hey, you're pretty good. <laughs> I thought, oh, thank you, thank you, son. So doing, get a hold of the plastic and sweep it off. Much more over here than you were last time you were over here. And aside from being very interesting, it's also lit. David and I, in the beginning of the movie, went to get hypnotized. And I, normally you do it by yourself, but because I have to hypnotize Kevin Bacon in the movie, I wanted to also learn how to do it. And uh, so I watched uh, David get hypnotized, and then I got hypno hypnotized myself, and it was actually, it ended up being a somewhat intense experience, and, I, and it completely changed the way we did the scene. 
Uh, David is just a really great guy. I mean, he's he's such like a heavy hitter screenwriter, you know, and he's directed one of their films. So it's I think it's nice um, that I'm sort of uh, a pretty new actor actor, and he's sort of just starting his uh, directorial career. So it's always nice to work with someone who's sort of ha having like a first experience as well. He's very very respectful. He's obviously a very talented writer very smart, has a very clear idea of what he wants, and yet is generous enough and big enough to allow all kinds of collaboration. I also said to, to, to David, uh, to the doctor, I said, can you hypnotize David? So it will be like, Ileana needs another close-up. There'll be many more scenes with Ileana in the film. You know, now he's in this writing-directing situation. And he was so clear about the things that he's clear about and so flexible and open to change about the things that he, that he was a little bit on the fence about. And to me, that showed a tremendous amount of confidence. All the time, we'll say lines incorrectly just because I don't even know why we just aren't memorized completely or it's somehow it's coming out easier than what he's written and he'll say no no you'll hear him in the background saying no 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 just let her say it the way she's saying it. I like that better I feel like I can I feel like we don't have any secrets and that may seem like a small thing but between an actor and a director it can be a really huge thing the worst times that I've had with directors is when I felt like there was stuff that they were holding back from me or I felt like I couldn't say what was really on my mind for fear of either being ignored or reprimanded or uh, or mistrusted, you know. And I feel like with with Dave that I don't think there's been anything that uh, he hasn't told me about what applies to you know our working situation, and there has not been nothing that I haven't told him. The other thing that's glaring about him is that he really likes women. And he likes strong women, and he likes women who are complicated and imperfect, and um, it's really a pleasure. It's very rare. I don't have issues with women. I don't know what they're talking about. I just like them wrapped in plastic. When we started the movie, we were all passing around all the scary movies that we'd done and been in, and strangely enough, Two of them were, uh, one was Ghost Story and one was The Tenant, which my grandfather was in The Tenant. And David has put in the movie little homages to other horror movies, like his tooth being Kevin's tooth and one scene coming out is, that happened in The Tenant. And some of it is because Ke um, David is such a film buff himself that he's added a lot of visual touches. And one of the movies we had watched was Don't Look Now, which throughout the movie, there's all these great visuals that you don't understand until the end of the scene. And, and David has put a lot of those great, scary visuals that you won't really understand until the end of the movie, and I like that. It's definitely something that I'm never going to forget, and I've learned a great deal from it. Um, it's going to be sad to go, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> I heard Liza saying about the camaraderie on the, on the set, which again, I said was reminiscent of some of the best movies that I've been in, where there was great chemistry between the actors, and that you could always see that on screen. I think that uh, the promise you make in this kind of movie uh, is that you're gonna scare them, and and I swear to God I will. I'll get you. If I don't get you, if I don't get you, uh, if if I don't get you on a deep, profound, you know, personal scare level that makes you uh, go home and you know lay awake and stare at the ceiling and look at the person sleeping next to you a little bit differently, that's what I'm trying for. If I can't get you with that though, um, 
then I'll get you with a sort of a sustained, you know, in the theater suspense sequence. I swear I'll get you with one of those. If I can't get you with a sustained sequence in the theater, I'll uh, I'll have somebody uh, leap up in front of you and scream, right? And if I can't, if that if that doesn't startle you, if I can't get you with that, I'll get you with a gross out. <laughs> there'll there'll be something where you'll just say, oh my god, and uh, be thoroughly disgusted. And I think what more can you want for your 850 than to be completely, you know, disgusted and turned off? That's all anybody wants. Thank <laughs> you.